My name is Ogaga. I'm representing the Hestia team. Um, we are providing new energies for emerging markets. Now, I begin very quickly with this picture. Help me. Not working. Now, this is what we all have in, in our various homes. Uh, very comfortable kitchen where, where we do our cooking. Um, clean environment, clean facilities, uh, and all of that. Uh, but unfortunately for uh, about 2.9 billion people globally, it's, it's not the same thing. So, so unfortunate for this lady and for so many others, uh, cooking experiences, uh, I mean, it's, it's dangerous to their health. I mean, it's um, not healthy. The smoke coming from uh, what she has to use and so many others. Uh, beyond this, the fact that uh, they have to spend so much time gathering the woods, the biomass with which they, they cook, uh, makes it difficult for them to even have time for education. And so it creates beyond the cooking issues, um, issues of education uh, for the people because no more time for, for studies. But looking at the pictures, you know, and the impact of, of this, we, we realized that from, from research, about four million deaths uh, has occurred by reason of this kind of open cooking uh, with the poor materials. To, to give you a perspective of this, this huge number, um, the death from HIV, AIDS, and malaria put together is about uh, 1.1 million, and then from malaria, about half a million. So about 2 million deaths from HIV, AIDS, and uh, from malaria, and we have 4 million deaths from cooking. So you can imagine the, 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 how gross this issue is. Now, moving forward, uh, 700 million families in the world uh, still use biomass to cook. Um, in in sub-Saharan Africa, it, it's about 350 mil, 150 million uh, uh, families in sub-Saharan Af Africa, and, and in Congo, about 450,000 families still use biomass for cooking. Uh, you, you might ask, why why Congo? Why why do we look at Congo in uh, specifically? Three reasons. Number one, uh, we have a strategic partnership with ENI, uh, which already has a base there in uh, Congo. Uh, secondly, the fact that 76% uh, of people in Congo use uh, biomass for cooking, and then from our projections, uh, about 11% is uh, uh, market growth for this uh, product. So, so what's our solution? What's the Hesia solution? We presented something like that to you earlier, but just to give you a perspective of this, we are integrating the simple technology which you saw, the stove, uh, with a biomass supply, and then with uh, a payment method. So what we're basically doing is to provide a bridge. Now, it's very important I say this, that there are several cooking stoves like these already available in the market, but they failed because they've not been able to reach out to the people who really need them. Uh, why? Because of the fact that these people are very poor. They don't have enough money to, to really afford this. And so we were able to provide um, a business model to bridge this gap. Moving forward very quickly, the technology. Three things it does. Number one, it's, it's efficient. And so there are about 45% biomass is saved uh, by using this uh, stove. Secondly, it's clean. Clean. 57% less pollution. And that, that's amazing. And then thirdly, which is very interesting, is the fact that there is an economic cycle being uh, provided. It's easy to, easy to make. So the local people, the artisans, could use local materials to build this stuff. So we're creating an economic chain beyond providing clean cooking. Now, looking at the, uh, the distribution model, which there's so much competition that's gone into this, but just to explain very quickly, what, what we seek to achieve, uh, it doesn't work, but what we seek to achieve is to have the woods from the villages given to us, and then in exchange, we give them the stove. So basically, the stove sells itself. Now, how do we make money? We make money by selling the stoves uh, to the cities and slums, and then we also sell the stove, so we make some money and profit from that. In the future, we're looking at a situation whereby we'll be able to go beyond using biomass to using pellets, which are actually uh, safer to use. Uh, quickly, going forward, what's our microcredit scheme about? Because this is very key. How can we get these people to get the stoves at very, very affordable price? Now, remember I said to you that there is about 45% savings from the biomass. And so, it sells itself. They, they, instead of buying the biomass, uh, they save about $6.5 every month using our, our stove. And what this means is that every month with our microcredit scheme, using uh, some uh, mobile phone technology which is already available in Africa, uh, they are able to buy with $5.9 per month for the next eight months our stove. 
Going forward, what are 20 weeks, 20 months, and 20 year vision? For the last 20 weeks, we work, worked on producing this uh, business model. Uh, and then our market entry is what we're looking at for the next two years. Uh, they're about, uh, I mean, one year and a half. By 2018, we seek to go to Congo for a market entry. And then by 2020, we'll be, we're looking at a situation whereby we move from using biomass to using pellets. Now, what's at, in addition, by 2022, we want to be able to convert, to, to convert the thermal energy from the cooking stove to provide electricity. And so with the power banks, they are able to have some more light hours for themselves and their families, and also to charge their phones. And in the next 20 years, what's our plan? We hope to be a major player in the renewable home technology uh, uh, globally. And that's it. Together, I think together, all of us, let's empower the clean cooking stove. Thank you very much.